Nico is well known for playing outside on Nuke, and along with his top 10 mechanical skills and knowledge of the game, he is the current highest rated Nuke player during 2022, even beating players like Simple. Hey, I'm Smirky and today I want to look at Nico and how he controls outside on the CT set of Nuke, so let's begin. Now let me show you what Nico does when he starts towards outside. I'll break down his starting utility, then I'll break down his positioning after he's thrown the utility. Nico will calmly throw a Molotov towards the electronic, and this will deny the T's from getting outside really quickly. He's just going to simply run and left click throw the molly. And you can see here the trap behind the Molotov. As a result, there might be an area where Glaive is right now, primed for a HE. So Nico's going to left click throw this HE, and he's going to deal quite a bit of damage towards Glaive. But commonly, Nico will use three pieces of utility to gain outside control. He'll throw his default Molotov, but he'll combine this with a flashbang. This flashbang should be able to prevent the T's from going outside early, but you do use a little bit more utility. After the flashbang, he'll combine this with a HG. If you don't want to use too much utility at the start of the round, you can always use the HE and Molly combo, whereas if you are confident and you want to play like Nico, you can use three pieces of utility. But you can see from Glaive's perspective, he's forced off the angle and has to respect the Molotov. Now, where does Nico position after he's thrown his starting utility? Let's have a look at it. Generally, he wants to look over towards Silo to ensure he's not getting fast dropped on him. He's going to throw his Molotov, throw a flashbang, then a HE. Once he doesn't spot anyone running out, he's going to aim towards top of main to ensure no one's going to pop their heads up. But after watching the angles, he's going to wait for the Molotovs to go, and once it does, he's going to throw the Glaive Smoke. I haven't seen him use this smoke that much, whereas I've seen Monisi use it quite a bit, but this smoke can be really powerful and I'll show you why. He's going to time it so when the Molotov is about to fade, the T's are going to throw their smokes and he will throw his. As a result, it can pose a danger towards the end side. If he wants to, he could sit around here, maybe go around the sides, or maybe creep through it. And ends are quite lucky in this round because no one checks towards Glyph. Another position you may choose to play is this one right here on top of main. If the T's wanted to drop down really quickly, you can hear the drop in on top of main. And if it was an A execute, he can always swing into main and help with the A bomb site. But from here, he's sure that no one's going to drop down and he's going to try and watch over the cross. With this positioning right here, you can actually spot the T shadows before you even see them. So if you want to, you can always pre fire the angle before he even see them. And Nico will sit here for a little bit before repositioning towards blue. Once again, Nico's going to throw his utility and watch towards Silo by standing on the front of Credit. From here, he can spot two Astralis members dropping, he gets the first kill, and Monisi will get the second. And from here, they're going to reposition, and I really like this setup. As of right now, Nico's in an angle where the T's can't sneak up on Monisi by either going on top of Hut or around Main. And they can't cross towards Secret, as Monisi has the cross with his AWP. As a result, it's a really dangerous crossfire, and it's hard to break. Now at times, Nico may position himself towards main, and this may be due to him thinking it might be an execute. So after throwing his utility, he's going to make his way towards main, pre-fire towards squeaky, and this will damage any players wanting to drop down, rush through the smokes, or just holding the angle. But after he takes quite a bit of damage, he's going to reposition towards outside to make sure no one crosses. And once again, we're going to see something similar. As you can see, it's round 2 right now, and especially against ends, he knows that they like to rush towards A. So as a result, he's just going to throw a flashbang towards outside and position himself towards the same angle. With this, he's going to get a kill onto Snags and force him to drop the bomb. Now that he stopped the momentum on the squeaky push, the rest of the T's are flooded out of Hut. Because his teammates are fighting the Hut players on the bomb site, it's perfectly fine for him to push out the smoke. This is typically best done when the enemies are fighting your teammates. But if you're going to try to think about pushing after your teammates are dead, it's probably not worth it. Now at times, Nico will try to deny the T's small calls by throwing Molotovs. And if you're playing in some sort of Team CS, or you know your opponents are constantly throwing small calls, this will be really good for you. In this round, Nico is going to come out of spawn and Monacy will drop a Molotov next to Red. With this, Nico will do his default Molotov, He'll come back to pick up the extra Molotov and throw it towards blue. If a smoke was to bounce through his Molotov, it would create a gap towards the smokes, and this can allow Nico to see if anyone's crossed, 
or potentially get a kill. Whereas for Astralis, it can be quite dangerous and may force them to use more utility than they should. Unfortunately in this round, the smoke is going to bounce over the Molotov just before it spreads. And this Molotov will be really effective against these two smokes. First is going to be the first smoke wall that you do as a standard smoke. And this will also be really effective for the middle smoke in the diagonal smoke wall. You can see that both of these smokes have to cross this general area. So if they want to do the standard smokes or the diagonal smoke wall, this Molotov can be effective. Now in this round, we're going to see something similar. He throws both his Molotovs. This Molotov will create a gap in Astralis' smoke wall making it so Nico can get the information that Astralis are not going outside and it might be an upper execute. Now there's some scenarios where Nico will go towards secret. Commonly he will do this twice a game and he will have different methods on how he wants to get towards secret. In this round he's going to throw smoke towards the red crate and throw a flashbang over. And with this, Monisi is going to throw the Molotov that Nico would normally throw. The flashbang should prevent the T's from being able to spot him, and the smoke should be able to give him a bit of cover as he gets towards Secret and defends it. And you can see when he makes his way over, if the T's wanted to do their wall smokes and make their way down Secret, it can be really dangerous, especially if they use the standard smokes, as they would have wasted three smokes because of one smoke. And if they wanted to try and get around it, they might try push through it where, well, you don't want to push through a smoke when Nico's holding it. With the smoke, he's just going to hold the angle to ensure no one pushes it. The T's are going to execute onto the A-bomb site, so with this, he's going to take a bit of liberty and take some map control. He'll check towards Silo to make sure he doesn't get lurked on, and he's going to go towards a position like this, where he can spot towards outside and try and deny the rotations from the T's. Now most times he'll make his way down ramp and towards secret, but again, this is commonly done twice a game. In this round he's going to make his way straight down, he hears the Strauss executing onto the A bomb site, he stops for a second to make sure they don't go down vents, and when he feels safe, he'll make his way towards double and hold vents. But commonly when Nico wants to go towards secret, he will wait around ramp if they did a ramp rush against two players, it could be devastating for the T side as they may not be expecting it. But ramp's going to be safe, so he's going to make his way down towards double. When he makes his way towards double, Monisi is going to give the information that they did the smoke wall and he can't see anything. As a result, he's going to Molotov deep to prevent the push from coming in. And this will allow Nico to jump peek safely from here. Now let me show you a round where it was a really good idea for him to go towards secret from ramp. In this round, Nico is going to make his way over, and the T's are wanting to do a ramp rush. Alexi B is just going to get overwhelmed, and two of his teammates are going to die. As a result, Nico is going to get tucked into this corner, and you can see from Snappy's POV, he's not going to be expecting Nico in this corner, and Nico will get away with two and a half kills. And now this puts him into a double 3v2. Now, how does Nico position himself towards outside when there's no outside smokes or no need for him to rotate? Let me show you. I've already shown you this in the video before, but just a quick mention, this is still a really good setup that you should probably use maybe once in a game. Another common position Nico might play is towards garage slash behind credit. In this round, he's going to spam the electronic smoke and get a kill onto Deha. From here, he's going to peek over credit and see if he can spot any T's heads behind credit. And you can see he's going to use the ledge to his left to gain a bit of a height advantage to try and spot anyone. Once he doesn't spot anyone, He's going to look towards electronic, where the smoke starts to fade, and he will catch Snappy. After he gets a kill, he goes for a quick jump peek towards Silo, and doesn't spot anything. Now that he's got two kills, he probably doesn't want to throw it away, so he's going to fall back towards CT spawn, and play towards red. And once again, Nico's going to play towards garage, trying to spot players trying to sneak their way out of the smoke, or perhaps trying to sneak into garage. But from here, he's going to get caught up by red, so if I was you, I'll probably be placing my crosser onto this entrance right here, just for a few seconds every few moments. Another position you might want to play is this blue box right next to credit. From this position, if there was no smokes or there was a gap in it, he can spot players crossing towards secret. This position also denies them from being able to sneak into garage or try to creep their way into hell. And something to know about this position as well, if a T was to sneak their way into main, if they hug the wall really tightly, you can't see their shadow. However, if they're not tightly hugging the wall, you'll be able to see their shadow like this, and if you do spot it, you can come back to your teammates, or you can go for a peek. But I wouldn't fully rely on this angle if you do want to hold main. 
But back to Nico, he's going to be holding this angle, the T smokes come in, so he's going to go for a quick spam, rotate towards credit, where he'll get a kill onto config. And afterwards, going for more jump peaks to see if he can get any more information. Now let's talk about his rotations. I'm going to give a quick brief of his rotations and some rules you should try to follow. Generally on nuke, you always want to have two people on A and one on ramp. In the scenario that he's make it down secret, it's the responsibility of the hook player to go down vents and the rotate player to come in to hold A. Meanwhile, Nico will hold main and prevent them from getting into hell or main. If Nico is in main and they can go down secret, it will be his responsibility to go down vents instead of the hook player. And the rotator will hold main. And this is due to him being much closer to the vents and can allow his A players to stay together. If a position, A or ramp, needs to be filled in and you're the closest person, you need to rotate to that area to allow your teammates to floor and hold the map. If you want a more in-depth guide to understand the rotations on Nuke, MSO made a great video that you should check out where it explains the rotations for the different positions. On Nuke, it's really common for outside smokes to be thrown. Let me show you how Nico will work around them. First, I'm going to show you some example sprays through the smokes. Next, I will show you his positioning and what he needs to do when he sees the outside smokes and how to hold on to some of his map control. I'll show you a few scenarios when he went over towards ramp to help out. And lastly, I'll show you some example rotations that he will need to make. Let's have a look at his spraying. When the outside smokes are being thrown, it's really common for Nico to spam through the smokes to try and get some free damage or a free kill. In this round, the T's are going to throw the standard smokes, and you can see he's going to spam through electronic, and will almost get a kill onto Snappy. And this is something he will do consistently. He wants to apply as much pressure as he can to the enemy team's smoke walls, making it really hard for them to go down, especially if they're lurking as like a group of four. And if they are, you're very likely to get a kill, honestly. But you want to be careful not to use your entire mag, just in case the T's want to look through the smoke you're shooting through. Now let's take a look at his positioning. Nico will position himself so he can always look towards main and prevent them from getting into hell as mentioned previously. Let's have a look at these key positions. In this round Nico is going to play towards main and help out towards A. When Nico places himself into this corner right here, he'll be able to catch any T's wanting to look into main and it's also difficult for a lurker to come in as they need to either look towards garage or main which is pretty much a 50-50 chance of taking the right fight. And when Nico plays in this corner right here, if his teammates do get contact from Squeaky, it's super easy for him to swing out and go for any trades. And in this round, Nico's going to be playing in this spot for a really long time as he can hold on to a lot of map control with this one position and they're pretty much playing free towards A which is a really good setup. But in a second, the A bomb site is going to get some contact. Snacks is going to swing out when Nico peeks. Nico will lose the fight, and Hunter should be able to get the trade. And if you want to change things up and you're playing towards Garage, you can always go into a position like this, where you're directly holding across main. And as mentioned before, the T's have a 50-50 chance to pick the right fight if they're wanting to sneak into main, as they either need to look into main or garage, depending on how you position yourself. But in this round, it's going to work really well for Nico and his org, as he's going to secure 4k. It's also quite common for Nico to play towards CT spawn and play towards this red box. With this angle, it's more about getting information than getting kills. With this position, you can see if anyone's crossing over towards secret, trying to look out towards garage, trying to look outside, or trying to look into main. And this type of angle is best played when it's kind of late in the round and the T's don't have outside control. But a few seconds into the round, Nika's going to come out, quickly clear towards garage to make sure he's not getting lurked on. Then after a few seconds, he's going to hold this angle. And especially if they're doing the outside smokes, this angle is really good. As you're able to stop any main lurks, they're most likely not going to be looking towards you. And of course, it's actually an easy shot to hit than the previous angle. We've already seen a similar angle to this before, but I'm just going to show it again. You can play this with a rifle if you want to, but in this round, Nico is going to be using a deagle. In this round, the T's done the standard smoked, and he could go down secret. As a response, he's already got a teammate in LXCB down secret, and he's going to make sure he holds garage and main for his A players. In this position, he is going to come out for a little bit to make sure no one's lurking out and try to catch him off guard. You can see he's going to do this once in a while until eventually he's going to spot Snappy, and well, 
I think it's best we don't show this clip. Now, late in the round, Nico may need to help towards ramp. In this round, Alexi B is going to spot some players over towards ramp, and Nico's the closest person. Nico's going to throw this smoke, which prevents the T's from getting out, and completely stops the execute. I know this is not a direct response to the smoke walls, but I did want to include this as he does come over towards ramp quite a bit when there are smoke walls. But after this, he's going to reposition towards red as his teammate Amonese is holding towards tunnels and they can go to main. In this round, Hunter's rotated down to lower and he's going to get contact from Glaive and Zipex. As a response, it's Alexi B's responsibility to rotate down to hold the B bomb site. And because the teaser managed to get down secret and could go ramp, Nico needs to fill in for ramp, while XB tries to hold on to that B bomb site. So as a response, Nico's gonna come in, hold ramp for a little bit, before fully giving it up and playing towards red, while making the teaser think that there's a player towards ramp still. But soon right after, Astro is gonna take ramp control, so he's gonna bounce his flash off the wall and try to peek off it, but well, it doesn't go well for him. Now let me show you some scenarios where Nico will need to rotate down. In this round, Ashra said the smoke that allows him to go towards events. As a response, Hunter is going to give this information, and Nico will come in from secret to try and find this lurker. They don't know that Zipix is down here because he's shifted down, but Nico is going to find him anyway. And this is the type of stuff you need to be careful about. These smokes can really cover up on where these T's are. In this round, Nico's going to be playing towards main, and the T's are going to throw the outside smokes. As Nico's the closest person, Nico's going to rotate down and throw the smoke to prevent the T's from being able to go towards lower. And once again, in this round, we're going to see the exact same thing. Nico's in main, they're going to throw the outside smokes, and Nico will throw his own smoke to prevent the push. Now let's have a look at Nico's positioning towards B. In this round, Nico needs to drop towards vents because they're doing the outside smokes, so he's gonna throw this smoke. And this is a really common smoke that a player like Boomich would use to stop the players from going down towards tunnels. With this, he's gonna position himself towards the vents, like this. And this is because they've just thrown a smoke towards Squeaky, making it so they can go down towards vents. And they could still be towards secret like we see right here. So as a result, he's gonna be playing towards the vents, Checking secret and then going back. This makes it so they can keep two players towards the bomb site, but as a result, Nico has to watch vents and tunnels, which, well, it can't always go well. He's going to keep jiggling back and forward until he gets spotted. He holds this angle, but he loses the fight to Madden. If the T's can't go down vents, this is an angle I prefer. In this round, he's going to make his way towards double, throw a HE towards the smoke just in case if the CTs were behind there, and he's going to use the door to jump peek. Soon as he spots a player, he can go back into the B-bomb site and close the doors behind him. And by him bumping his head on the door, it makes it so he has a really short jump peak, making it really hard for Ents to hit his head. If you want to hold the angle, you can play an angle like this, where you can spot the T's heads if they come into frame. But in a second, the T's are going to have access to ramp control, so as a response, Nico's going to dig deep towards the back of the site. And this is an angle I really like, as when Astralis try to come down and perhaps try to do their entry path thing, they'll probably be looking towards control, where they're in Nico's view for a kill. In this round, he's going to get away with only one kill, tries to pre-fire double, but doesn't quite get it. Another position you might want to play if you're playing towards the bomb site is this one right here on top of it. This angle is really effective, as you can see the T's feet, and they might struggle to locate you, especially if you're using an A1. So when they try to push him through the door, he can see their feet before they can see him. And well, it doesn't turn out well, friends. And you can see from Madden's POV, when he tries to go for the trade, he doesn't know where to look until it's too late. After watching a couple of Nico's demos, I've noticed he's quite reactive. And also I play needs to be able to respond quickly to what the T's throw at their team to prevent them from slipping through the cracks. He's quite flexible. Due to a lot of situations and scenarios, he needs to be able to play a lot of different positions to hold on to an area. He's also really smart with his positioning. A lot of his one fights can come down to better positioning by using off angles, sitting in areas to counter entry paths, or sitting in a position where they have a 50% chance to check your angle first. If you have any pros or positions you want me to break down next, feel free to put in the comments below and I'll have a look. 
perhaps you want a really good set piece on the T-Sab Inferno or taking banana control really easily. Well you can have a look at my Twitter video where I broke down Na'Vi taking banana control away from Fizz in the link in the description. Apart from that, thanks for watching, see you in a bit.